So yeah, people, I wanted to share this video with you today. Um, I actually spoke to this company yesterday, Rocket Plane Global. And what I wanted to show you, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. They have a rocket plane that can launch horizontal from the ground, fly up to 40,000 feet, where you probably won't even be able to see it. Because you, as you can see right here, they say, load oxygen and fuel in flight at 40,000 feet away from high population areas. Which means, they're going to do this fucking thing when you're not looking. And this thing detaches with oxygen in it, liquid oxygen, with a payload, or people, and it flies up to 120 kilometers at Mach 11. So that's just a little bit, that's just above the Carmen line spot of 400,000 feet. Right? They launch a payload. The satellite is released above 100 kilometers altitude, then is delivered to orbit by expendable boosters. Satellite may be 1,500 to 3,000 kilograms, depending on orbit. Or 1800 kilograms to space station. Then they glide back to flight altitudes. Now, why are you posting this video, Robert, and showing us this? If you read this data and go to this website, you'll see why. This company has been in existence since 1995. Now, I know the naysayer says, ah, yeah, the shuttle was underdeveloped in the 1970s. Yeah, fucking great, fantastic. But, just because the shuttle was being developed in the 1970s, and this company didn't pop up until 20 years later, what makes you think that NASA's shuttle wasn't doing the same fucking thing? Yeah, we've seen these fucking launches on television. People say that they've been at the Kennedy Space Center to see these launches. But as many videos we've all looked at to watch the shuttle take off, right? You see it take a vertical launch, then it takes this, flips upside down, and then takes a horizontal trajectory, right? Okay, 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 miles an hour. Gets to about 17,000 miles an hour. At least that's what they're showing you on the video telemetry of what the data is telling you. Everybody can believe that that's real fucking telemetry data. I don't. I want to know the genesis of that data. Just a fucking software program. We can do that shit on Flight Simulator. Come on, man. There's a shitload of programs out there that can do that. But my point being is that the shuttle takes a horizontal trajectory. And you can be on the ground at Kennedy Space Center and watch these things launch. But then eventually, you can't see it anymore. After it separates from the solid, the main fuel tank, after the solid rocket boosters go away, you see that, right? And then it continues on with the main fuel tank and then you can't see it anymore right so after that when you can't see it anymore you basically say ah that was fantastic that was great it's beautiful it's awesome wow we can do some incredible things and then you stop looking up in the sky you walk away and brag to your friends you were at the launch and you shot video of it and check it out NASA's got videos out there where they actually show these launches in high definition now so people can see them up live and personal. And they're doing that shit to show you. They're literally doing that in high definition to show you these close-up views. To show you how real the launch is. Okay? And let's just say for argument's sake. I'm a NASA fan. And I see this. So, I'll agree. Those launches are real. But it's where you fucking go after that. 
because the excuses I was given on why there's no camera outside of the fucking shuttle. You can put a little fucking pinhole camera, man. You can put a camera about the size of a fucking half dollar right on the top of the fucking windshield outside the fucking shuttle. Giving you... I mean, you can do that shit with cars. They're putting cameras out on the bumpers outside of fucking cars. They're putting them on the front end of the car, the rear end of the car. I've even seen cars where they got fucking cameras right on the fucking mirrors, the side mirrors, so you can actually see inside your car where, if anything's coming up on a blind side. So if you can do that with a car, why the fuck you couldn't do that with a shuttle 20 years ago? They could have did the same thing, right? But the view they show you all the time is something placed on the solid rocket boosters or the main fuel tank, right? They show you the cameras there. But they ain't putting nothing on the shuttle. They got a few cameras on the shuttle. They said, oh, yeah, there's, there's internal cockpit view of cameras inside it. But you can't see shit out the fucking window. And the excuses that I've heard on why they don't do that because... If you put a camera on there, you got to change the entire design of the fucking vehicle. Bullshit. That's a bunch of aerodynamic rocket engineering fucking delusion. These cameras don't need to be that big. You don't change the fucking aerodynamics that fucking drastically. Where you still couldn't get the fucking thing up there when you got over fucking 100,000 pounds of fucking thrust. I mean, really. So, looking at this website, you got to ask yourself, is this how NASA was doing it? Because I've seen photos, which I'm going to show you right now, that were taken from the STS, and it sure as hell don't look like they're in fucking space. It looks like they were flying around, just like this fucking rocket plane right here. So, stand by. Let me show you the photos. So here's a photo taken from, what was it, uh, STS-127. STS-127 was flying in the atmosphere. Okay. Now you tell me, does that look like it's from fucking space? That's during a sunset. That's STS-127. They say this photo was taken from space. Uh, you know, maybe. 262,000 feet, maybe 300 and some odd thousand feet. But remember, it's a fucking shuttle. It's a rocket plane. That's where this photo was taken, people. There you go, right there. So, back to this company. I can tell you here right now. It is of my belief and understanding that NASA has been doing this shit before this company did. This company probably filed for the, the patent to develop this capability. They're still in the uh, financing stages. They're trying to bring this to market, and they're taking on investors. But when you look at this concept, you look at this drawing, you look at this idea, you just need to ask yourself, is it possible, is it plausible that this is exactly how the space shuttles were operating. Nothing ever went into free space or the vacuum. Nothing. The ISS can't be at 245 miles because 100 kilometers is 62 miles, 65 miles. Highest rocket launch, 73 miles. Now, when you talk about the main fuel tank and solid rocket boosters, let's just say they can get to about 100 miles. Do you really think the ISS is at 245 miles? Moving at 17,000 miles an hour? 17,000 miles an hour. You really believe that a 50,000 pound telescope could fit inside the ISS? I mean, I'm sorry, the space shuttle? A 27,000 pound telescope could fit? So, looking at this company, You got to just come to whatever conclusion you're going to come to. I've got this idea that 
anything that comes out into the commercial public sector with these private companies has been in existence for anywhere between 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And I said this in one of my vid my first videos regarding like Ale, that Japanese company that can create artificial stars, distance suns and moons. Right? They can create a light show for you. Shooting stars, all that shit. I that's in one of my first that's one of my first videos if you guys go back. So for me, just because this private company says that this is what they're planning to do and they're still raising money for it. This is technology that has been in existence as long as the shuttle program became a concept. I go on record for saying this is exactly how the shuttle has been operating. It's never been 240, 300 fucking miles capturing the fucking Hubble or docking with the fucking ISS in free fucking space in microgravity for weeks, months, or 15 fucking years. What goes up must come down. This shit cannot stay up there that long. It just can't. It gets to that altitude, does its business, launches it, and go. You go. So what makes you think, when they say that this thing would dock with the ISS, what makes you think it'd be able to get anybody up to the ISS, which is a fucking another 200 kilometers? Two to three hundred kilometers above the surface of the earth. You just can't. You just can't. Here it is right here, people. You see it for yourself. You know my motto. It's not what you know. It's what you can prove. And there goes the fucking proof right there. This is the company. Rocket plane. Rocket plane. They haven't even gotten off the ground yet. How about the maps? Peace out, people. This was going to be a short one, like I said, but, you know, open your eyes, open your mind. Jaren says that one. Me, you got to keep doing the research. Make up your own mind. Stick with the status quo and the narrative they're pushing you. Or hit yourself over the fucking head with a hammer and wake the fuck up. Take care, people.